Chris Murphy, managing editor of the Cap Times. We're going to pass it off to our food edit editor, Lindsay Christians, in just a minute. But first, I want to thank our sponsors for making this video event series possible. Our presenting sponsor is Sitka Salmon Shares. Use the code COOKWITHCAP to get $25 off the first month of a premium Sitka seafood share. Learn more about their values and their fishermen at SitkaSalmonShares.com. We'll drop this code and link into the chat in just a minute. Our official kitchen sponsor is Kessenix, which is where Lindsay and patients are tonight. For over 90 years, Kessenix has provided Madison and Dane County with quality products and outstanding customer service. Stop by their showroom to shop like a chef because they're always open to the public. You can visit Kessenix.com for more information. And our official beer tonight is Shiner Bach. We hope you got some Shiner to enjoy while watching tonight, but you should also know that we're giving away a few 12 packs to lucky viewers. There's an entry link for a drawing that will drop in the chat uh, right after the demonstration is over. Click that link to win. Spoiler alert, you gotta be 21 to win. A quick plug that if you post any pictures on social media while watching tonight, please tag the Cap Times or in Cap Times Idea Fest on Instagram and Twitter. We'd love to see them. I also wanna thank any Cap Times members for joining us tonight and for your continued support of local journalism in our newsroom. If you're not a member, you can become one by going to membership.captimes.com. Speaking of Cap Times members, they get 50% off of IDFS tickets. And I hope that many of you watching tonight will join us this weekend for the live or live streamed events that we're hosting at UW Madison. We've been posting virtual events like this one at captimesidfs.com all this week during the first part of the festival. But there'll be more than a dozen sessions coming up tomorrow and all day Saturday. I'll post a full schedule of events in the chat. So without further delay, I'll now pass it off to Lindsay, who's one of Wisconsin's foremost food writers and critics. Enjoy the event. this thing on all right <laughs> welcome welcome everybody thank you so much for being here tonight on a, such a gorgeous night it's been a beautiful day um, and welcome chef patience hello hello thank, thank you, you for, for having being me here. yeah I'm so glad you're here um, so just to start out okay. I, I would, was hoping that you could maybe introduce yourself a little bit and talk a little bit about what you do okay absolutely well hello everyone uh, thank you for being here tonight my name is chef patience I am born and raised here in Madison, Wisconsin. My family um, has been in Wisconsin since the 1950s. Um, my grandfather was actually a chef at the UW Madison. He actually worked his way up into owning property and owned two houses on the south side of Madison, one of them that is still there today. The first house that um, I grew up in started off as a boarding house mm. in, um, at UW, so students would rent out the rooms and they would live there. Um, now that is my grandmother's house. She's still living, my great-grandmother. She is 98 years old, born in 1923. This is going to be one of the recipes that my grandma cooks all the time from ingredients that she grew in her backyard besides the corn. <laughs> so I'm excited to kind of show you all how we you know, grew up eating um, in my community. I own a business called Palette Pleasures Catering here in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, it's located at the Feed Kitchen. And I do private catering events out of all three Pancake Cafe locations here in Madison. So after 2 p.m., if you need birthday party, baby shower, things like that, you actually can book me through my website, palettepleasuresonline.com. I also do pop-up events every Sunday out of the feed kitchen as well. Um, you can go to our website and subscribe, palettepleasuresonline.com again, and you just subscribe with your email, and then we'll send you out the email blast every week. So what kind of things have been most popular, the things that you've been doing? I know you do a birria, and yeah. you're talking about some chicken that you've been doing recently too. So yeah. tell us a little bit more about your food. So my soul food is my number one because I did get that recipe from my grandmother, my yeah. great grandmother. So everyone loves my soul food. Um, but I'm also very popular for my birria tacos. Um, it's a taco that originated in Jalisco, Mexico. And um, it became really, really popular around like last year. And I started trend cook cooking that taco. Nice. And it just started selling out all the time. People were always on my website requesting it. So I just continued to cook it and cook it. And I got really, really popular off yeah. of that. And then I introduced the world to my um, cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my cinnamon but rolls yeah. okay. um, actually started off at the Pancake Cafe in Stoughton. Um, we sold them out of there for a while. We noticed that they did really, really well. So I actually turned my focus to my cinnamon rolls. Um, and I'm rebranding those. And it's going to be called Sin City Cinnamon Rolls. So I'm trying Aww. to get those into all of the grocery stores that we have. Nice. Um, I also make them fresh. I will have them fresh at Luna's Black Party, September 25th as well. Oh, nice. Coming up. Oh, yeah. And I have all flavors. S'mores, Hershey's, um, Hershey's S'mores. I have caramel apple pie, peach cobbler, strawberry oh cream. Yeah. They're really, really good. <laughs> 
they're about this big, so <laughs> they're really big. They're jumbo cinnamon rolls, easy to share. So, that's and I have amazing. a three-year-old, so I had to impress her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And then, uh, so you also do these Sunday dinners, right? Yeah. And are those out of feed? Yep, so okay. those are out of feed kitchen. So that's actually um, how I started my career. I, last year, during COVID, um, it was just really, really hard, obviously, on all of us. Mm -hmm. And I actually ended up getting my LLC um, March 2020. We okay. went into quarantine Goodness. March 18th. <laughs> right. So I had to continue. I had to decide whether I'm going to continue or, mm -hmm. or if I'm not. Um, I was coming from being a stay-at-home mom, so there was no other options than to get out of the house. <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and um, go to culinary school at Madison Media, um, Madison Media, <laughs> Madison <laughs> um, Area Tech, uh, MATC. Um, great, amazing program. Um, sure. and then when COVID hit, our program ended. So right. I just wanted to keep going. I didn't want to stop. So I went to YouTube University, Google <laughs> University. Um, nice. My um, teacher there, John Johnson, actually um, just gave me some tips on how I can just continue um, mm. with my career. So I did that. And here I am today. Nice. This consistency. And it sounds like you're doing so determined. many different things. Like oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. You have to be innovative right now. Yeah. Um, I saw so many of my friends with restaurants struggling to pay their rent, struggling yeah. to have par stock, struggling to do so many things. And they were like, Patience, I wish I was in a position where I didn't have that overhead cost and I was able to just, you know, pick up and go and move my kitchen where I need to do. So I just stuck with that and it's, it's working really well. Um, if it's not broke, don't <laughs> touch it. So yeah. that's kind of where, you know, I am with this and just trying to, you know, get myself out there. When people taste the food, they love it so yeah. you know and once my grandma stamped me really nothing anyone else could say mattered yeah. but um <laughs> my grandmother like she really worked really really hard with me um just to make sure that you know um i had all of those things that she were, was not able to um, learn mm -hmm. she's 98 she had to drop out of school in the third grade to work for her family so she can't read and write so all of the recipes that I learned are verbal I learned from tasting um, I'm going to use some measuring and all that for the purpose of this demo but I actually don't use a lot of measuring it's all by taste um, it's how I cook and it's how my grandma cooked but in order for those recipes to be passed down I'm working on this cookbook um, based off of our seasoning line that's coming out, Louisa's Spice Rack. So it's named after my grandma, yep, Louisa's oh, Spice it. Rack. So it'll be out next year. Um, so we're trying to roll. Like losing count. <laughs> yeah, like literally, like I'm, that's why I say you really have to be innovative right now in yeah. these times. Like I'm coming for like, Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> <laughs> Wolfgang Puck. You know, I'm, I'm coming for. I'm coming for. I'm coming from those yeah. for those guys. Um, they oh motivate God, me so a lot. Late. They motivate so me yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, because they're doing everything. They're not just, you know, oh, stuck yeah. in a the kitchen. They're doing everything. They have TV shows. They have a spice line. They have that. And that's kind of where I wanna, where I wanna be. Yeah. So. Just really diversified. Yeah, like, absolutely, very, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and my mentor, he, before he passed, Jeff Rod, Rod Latson, he um, instilled, you know, that versatility in me and just being able to do whatever I want to do and have that freedom. Right. So. You know, I'm, I'm excited with this business. It's, it's working out great. I'm blessed. I can't complain at all. So. The chef Rod at Bonefish Grill, right? Bonefish Grill, yeah, yep. yep. Yeah. I met him there. I was a server there for five years. So that's actually where, like, I fell in love with the gourmet food, the plating and all of that. Because, you know, soul food, what I'm going to cook for you with just stewed cabbage, um, it's not normally beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to... Um, take soul food and just make it a little bit more beautiful, a little bit, um, a nicer presentation yeah. um, without compromising the flavor. Yeah. So. Because that's the, that's the baseline. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it's interesting that you talk about, like, learning from your grandma and, like, taking inspiration from her and from her recipes and things. I, I, I feel like when I look at these old, the old historic recipes that I have from my grandma and, like, mm -hmm. and that were passed down, there's, there's a lot of, like, add flour to make dough. And you're like, okay. Right. How much? Just figure it out mm -hmm. like do you still need to sift the flour well maybe not because the ingredients that we have are different like there's a ton of recipes my mom gave me that just say oleo and I'm like oleo I'm just saying butter like right right, you know? right exactly so, lard I, yeah there's a lot like of that. generational stuff there mm -hmm. that you kind of have to translate for the way that we cook now right and we were talking before you know we started rolling about like just the size of cabbages and yeah like the stuff I get these massive ones from the farm but a lot of times in the stores you're getting you know it's, it's much smaller so when you say yeah. a head of cabbage in a recipe well like what does that mean? Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
Well, hey, Ev, do you want to get started? Oops. Yeah, let's go let's get started. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> Hope y'all are ready to eat. I know you smelled the turkey meat. It smells really good. Yeah, yeah great, great. I always great. wish we had smell vision on this. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So everyone who's at home cooking, I hope you did start your turkey meat already. Um, you wanted to get it nice and tender. Um, I already added my six drops of Tabasco. I normally <laughs> don't show people this, but for this occasion, I will. This actually is great to tenderize your meat. So that's cooking, and then we want to just get started on the cabbage. That's back here? That's back here. So this is the smoked turkey meat back here. Oh, yeah. It's just covered with water, and it's been cooking. I have some smoked turkey tails. I prefer tails because they don't have as many bones. Legs have the most bones from my experience, um, and I have a little one, and I also have an older grandmother, so I don't like all the cartilage, and I have to pull out all of that. So yeah, yeah. turkey tails are the best for the most part. And you're adding water if it gets too low, Yeah. Right? So, so if it, it gets below the... Yep, if it gets below um, at all on the top of the turkey meat, you just want to add water to just barely cover it yeah. and that's kind of how I keep measuring um, keep the measuring on how much water you need for your cabbage so it should, it should be about three to four cups of water yeah I had not bought turkey tails before mm -hmm. so I went looking to find like what grocery stores have them and a fair number of them do like, yeah. oh yeah more oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, was like, tails. Like, tails. I didn't they're know right for soups and stews like they are made yeah. the flavor and smoked tails are amazing and if you make your own even better. Oh, yeah. um, but my favorite place to get them is on World Market in Sun Prairie um, on West Main Street. Okay. She has the most reason reasonably priced and then she also carries halal meat. Ooh, so nice. she's she's a great resource when it comes to um, my tails. Nice. And they're so meaty. All right. So what I did was just cut up some cabbage into, um, I'll show you how to cut it up, but into some small pieces, but not too small. I do have a little bit of sugar on the cabbage. This actually helps, um, I really, I'm not positive, maybe I should double check my science, but my grandma always told me it tenderizes your collard greens and your cabbage. That so sounds right. I always that start with like a little. sugar and salt? And yeah. grandma said, it says that it's for true. <laughs> it's true. So well, she's watching right now, so <laughs> you're right. Um, so I just cut up a little bit, and I'm just gonna kinda show you how I cut it up. You take the core out? Or hmm. Yeah, so okay. thank you for that. Yeah. So actually, the easiest way, you. no, no, you're right. <laughs> easiest way is to just take, your knife like this. And then I just pull the core out. And then I, I usually like it, it should be left like this. Pretty easy to cut. So I'll just take my knife. and that's about how small I want it. Some people prefer it to be a lot smaller. I don't like cabbage shreds. I'm not making coleslaw. Um, so I prefer to be like this. Does it get smaller in the stew? So it does. So it's actually going to cook down. Um, believe it or not, this is going to feed about eight to 10 people. <laughs> nice. Um, if you eat it, depends on how you eat it. If you're my husband, it's going to feed one. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of him. My mother-in-law and my husband make me make this all the time. That's all right. awesome. Yes. So I'm going to just add a little bit more sugar on the top. And everything's been cleaned and washed. The veggies look really good. Yeah. All right. And then my grandma's watching. And I don't normally start with salt, but since grandma's watching, I'm going to add some salt <laughs> right now. So normally, if you want to do it the way my grandma do it, add a little salt and sugar right away. And then it breaks it down a little bit. Yeah, it breaks yeah. it down a little bit. Helps tenderize it so it can cook a little bit faster. Yes. So, before I even throw our cabbage in the pot, I'm just going to clean this off real quick. I got to say, I come from Slovak people, and the combination of things like cabbage and sausage is very... It's very much our language. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's yes. a lot of potatoes. Absolutely. So my grandma was born in Pensacola, <laughs> Florida, um, moved to Montgomery, Alabama. Mm -hmm. During the Great Migration, she moved to, to um, Wisconsin for work. Uh, she settled in Milwaukee. Okay. And um, then she came here to meet my grandfather. A couple, she came to visit, and she told them she would be gone for two weeks, met my grandfather, and never went back to Milwaukee. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> When was that? What, how long? Ooh, so that was, so my grandfather had his house like 10 years before he met her. I believe it was the 50s. So she came here in the 60s. Oh, okay. So she's been here for 
yeah. a while. Yeah, she's been here for a while. My um, my big mama, which is my grandma, my mother's mom. We call her Big Mama because my grandma's still alive, so she's grandma all day. And so we have I Big Mama and that, yeah. Grandma. Yeah, yeah. My my daughter gets. Well, luckily, she's not confused. So we have a Gigi, a Nana, a Grandma. <laughs> we have all that. So. Yes. So. So your kiddo is three? Yes, my daughter's three. Does she like this? She, she loves it. Oh, she all right. She loves it. So she's at that weird age where she doesn't like anything unless she like knows what it is. Yeah. So if I don't tell her it's chicken or lamb, she won't eat it. So like any meat that I give her, it's dark, I say it's lamb. Any <laughs> white meat, it's chicken. So, you know, so she's kind of at that great. age. So. Um, I did tell you you can go ahead and just add your sausage in your pot with your turkey meat. I like to brown it just to give it a little bit of flavor. So we're just going to put these here in the skillet. I don't need any butter at all for this recipe because the sausage is going to give us a little bit of fat. So we're going to just stuff the pan here. Oh, great question. So the sausage that I bought, um, I usually like to do um, the andouille sausage. I believe it's Kessler's andouille sausage. It's oh, that's so good. good. It's local too. I've had it. Yeah, so, it's so good. really good. Yeah. Um, but I didn't get that one today. I got um, <laughs> just some garlic smoked sausage from Pick and Save Metro yeah. Market now. I feel like using yours maybe has some too that I've liked. Yeah, their sausages are yummy. It, believe it or not, um, in Wisconsin, it's so hard to find like really really good sausage mm. um so i've i've just been looking local you know being a chef um growing up my mom was on food stamps so we ate whatever she could afford mm -hmm. so she's buying the same meals all the time spaghetti fried chicken baked chicken lasagna like something she can feed the whole family yeah um so when i got older i wanted to make sure like i could try everything i wanted to taste everything mm -hmm. i wanted to do everything um why, why did I start talking about this? Sausage. 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 Um, <laughs> yes. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But, um, sorry, the, the sausage kind of threw me off. Yes. But yeah, so, um, but yeah, my mom, she cooked like all these, um, you know, affordable meals that she could cook. So I just wanted to start trying everything. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, when I became a chef, I started learning, like, if you can buy local food, people grow all of this stuff that I get from Woodman's and mm -hmm. Picking Save here in Wisconsin. So, like, I, I've, like, mm -hmm. recently in the last couple of years have just been trying to go as local as possible. Like, my vegetables, <laughs> most of them come from Alex Botanical Garden. He's a black farmer here in Wisconsin as well, in Madison. Um, Yusuf Minrella from Trade uh, Trade Roots. Yeah. Um, um, Robert Pierce, the South Madison's Farmers Market. Yes. You know, I just tried yellow watermelon from the for the first time from them. <gasps> oh, I so love good. yellow watermelon. It's so so good. good. Yeah. So good. So I, I've just really been trying to um, expand my taste buds, and I think that's a, a, another place where my, my love for cooking comes from. Just being so you know, poor. And like with these um, recipes, like this one with my grandma, when she lived in Montgomery, Alabama, she used to work for this family called the, the Taylors or the Tylers. And they had a grocery store. And um, she was their nanny. And at the end of the shift or at the end of the week, they would bring home a box of meat scraps from the store to give to her so she could feed her family. So this is where one of these meals, this meal actually comes from. That's why you have pieces of turkey meat, you have pieces of sausage, mm -hmm. and then you have all of the vegetables and things like that. Because my grandmother, you know, she took what she had in her garden, took what she had around, threw it in a pot, and made a great meal. Yeah. So. And one of the things I was noticing as I was looking through the recipe, I was, I was like, oh, one of the ingredients here really is time. Like, you yeah. have to, like, have that time for those flavors to really develop. It's oh, not yeah. as quick. It's not like a steak. You just sear it off, whatever. Right. You're drawing these flavors out. But I think it's a deeper flavor. Like, it's more oh, complex yeah. and interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's why you cook that turkey meat for an hour or yeah. two hours and just kind of extract all that flavor out. Let the cartilage break down, get all gelatinous and all that good stuff. And just give you a really nice coating. Yeah. Um, with your flavor, it gives you all the fat you need. You don't need to add any butter. You don't need to add any oils or anything like that. So. We also, I, I think I asked you this via email, but uh, about like using a pressure cooker or a slow cooker. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you said that yes, it can. Yeah. Adapt. So yeah. I'm, I'm being that I own this business. I'm a busy mom myself, so mm. I actually use a lot of um, Instapot meals. Yeah, this is one I of love the, my Instapot. This Pot. is one of my favorites. Yeah. You put the turkey meat in there before you have to do whatever you need to do. You come home like the last. You know, when you come home, before you take your shower, throw your cabbage and all your vegetables in there mm -hmm. and just let it cook. 
Nice. Yeah. yeah. I don't cook it too long. Um, if you cook it too long, it just gets a little bit too mushy to me. Um, some people like it like that. My grandma loves it like that, but I like a little <laughs> crunch and I like a little of the nutrition still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not even completely mushy. Just kidding, yet. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The sausage smells really good too. So these are browned up a little bit. So we're just going to put them in the pot here. Just extract a little bit more flavor. It just goes right in the pot, literally. Nice. Do we want to? Do we have a like, towels? So you could kind of bring it over. Oh, for? I have a towel. Yeah. yeah. You want to see it? Yeah. Absolutely. Just so the camera can see it. No problem. Um, yes. Awesome. Cool. All right. Especially like the turkey tails, which is not an ingredient I I work with. I don't know yeah. if other people work with. Yeah. A lot of people don't work with turkey yeah. tails. Yeah. Can I interrupt for one? Person? Yes. Question from the audience about if um, you could list the local farmers that you just mentioned. Yeah. Again, yeah, absolutely. One of our uh, one of our viewers is interested in learning. Yeah. So Alex Botanical Garden. Um, you can find him. That's his name on Facebook. A L E X. A L E X. Okay, yeah. Alex. Yeah, I message him on Facebook. <laughs> That's how I get my stuff from him. Um, he has a few plots outside of Madison, nice. so he has to, you know, go for a drive. Um, Yusuf Benrella um, with Trade Roots. He's also another farmer here. Um, he's connected with Pasture and Plenty, I know. Yes, yes. He's yeah. also connected with Pasture and Plenty. He also works out of our home kitchen, Feed Kitchen, as well. Oh, so nice. that's Wonderful. where him and yeah. I connected. Um, as well as the South Madison's Farmer's Market, which is Mr. Robert Pierce. And, um, oh, the Badger Rock Community Farmer's Market as well. Yeah. Um, they have a really, really nice um, farmer's market as well. The South Madison Farmer's Market is Sunday? Is I'm not Sunday? positive of the day. They're, they're out a lot. They're yeah. out most of the days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. out most days. They are, yeah. Yeah, they're actually out it's there most like days Wednesday in front one, of. I saw, yeah. Yeah, on Wingra, mm -hmm. um, in front of the post on office. Yep, yep. Yeah. And then sometimes they're off of Rimrock Road. Yeah. So you kind of just have to go to their website or their Facebook. That's usually where I find out where they are. Yeah. Um, Check it because I know Wingra's been torn up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's near our offices. Yeah, yeah. And it's been very torn up lately. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, but these are the so, yeah. So these are turkey tails here. Well, they really aren't there many bones, are they? So yeah, no, they're not. They're, so most of the bones are just here and here. But all this fat, all this meat is what's cooking up here. So I just want, to, want you all to kind of see that. And if you can even see, can you see this here in this pot? Turn it. So the, so the water you want is to just cover the meat. And if you can see all those good juices kind of cooking up. This is like your, your meat, your beef broth. You're making your own meat broth for, nice. your, for your cabbage. My All grandmother right. always claimed the turkey neck. Turkey neck, yeah. The neck was her thing. Yes, yeah, like every year Thanksgiving. Turkey yeah, neck. It's, it's actually turkey necks are really, really good. Yeah, I hang um, on to them, and I hang on to I like I've gotten really into like spatchcocking my chicken. Yeah. Like, grills and cooks faster. So that's the best way to grill it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I've been, but I pull out those backs, and I've been using them when I get enough of them. I use them for broth. Oh wow. Our photographer Ruthie always makes. Yeah, that's like, what you should do. You definitely too. save. Like culinary school taught me to save every bone. Oh yeah. Like I except bet. like your seafood bones, but like I put all the bones up in the freezer, or I make some more broth, or like consomme or something like that. Just, or yeah. stock. Stock is when you use the bones. Broth is when you use the meat. I always, I'm never going <laughs> to remember that. I'm never going to retain it. Okay, say that again. So broth is when you use the meat. Okay. And stock is when you use the bones. Stock is stock more, has bones. way more flavor. There's got to be some kind of mnemonic that I Yeah. Can. And you know, one cool thing I forgot to say about this is if you want, instead of using water, you can use vegetable broth Ooh, with yeah. your turkey tails. It adds a little bit more flavor. I would say use unsalted, but you can use vegetable oh, broth yeah. too. Because if it's salted, it'll reduce too much and get really salty, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So then I'm just going to cut up this red pepper here. Red peppers are coming in at the farms. My husband has been bringing them home, and they're beautiful. Oh, like yeah. Long Carmen's from Vitruvian, where we get our little CSA. Oh, yeah. They're amazing. They look really So good. if you saw how I just cut that pepper there, I learned that from Gordon Ramsay, YouTube University. <laughs> <laughs> the least waste possible and without uh, compromising too much. Nice. So you're just going to make some big Julian cuts here. If you can kind of see how we cut those peppers up there. All right, I'm going to cut up the corn as well. So the easiest way for me to do that is just to make an indentation and break it. Okay. 
doesn't look the prettiest, but it's going to taste the best. Every time I have a seafood boil, you know, have you ever been to like those boil and bag seafood places and they let like oh, a yeah. corn in there? Oh, see, this is kind of like what this is, yeah. but without like seafood and right, corn. Right, it is kind yeah, of, it's right? Kind of like because a, the sausage is like in there. Like a poor man's boil, you know? <laughs> kind of like what that is. Turkey, turkey boil. Yeah, turkey boil, right, exactly. So for the birria, are you, what meat are you usually using in your birria? So for birria, I either use, um, Utility knuckle, or I use a brisket, nice. or I use, um, yeah, or I use steak, or yeah, I use steak, or I use shrimp. Nice. So I have, I usually have the variety. I made, I also make these birria taco pizzas. So nice. it's pretty much like a pizza, huge 12 inch tortilla, the meat inside, another one, sauce, cheese, all that good stuff. That sounds amazing. Oh yeah, people, people love it. I actually retired from making birria because. I was pushing out so many orders, and it was just me and my sister. We were so overwhelmed. So until we could yeah. find more staff, we were like, we're not going to be able to cook this anymore. Um, but my request just went crazy in my inbox. So I was like, OK, you got this it. Here you guys yeah. are. So I'm going to throw this in here real quick. It's going to cook pretty fast. Nice. Are you adding any more water at this point yet or not yet? So I'm not yet. Okay. So you really don't want to add any more water until you get all of your ingredients in. And with the cap, the cabbage is going to cook down, so you don't want to do too much. So I'm just going to take the corn out of here, and then I'm going to add the garlic, the onion, and the red pepper all at the same time. Is this a pretty adaptable stew? You could add other vegetables too if you want to. You can add whatever you want, actually. Um, this is made all different kinds of ways. Different people, different families make this differently. Um, my grandmother, this is just the way that she made it. And just the way that my taste buds are used to tasting it. Yeah. I was thinking about, I have fennel in my fridge right now, and I was like, fennel would be good in this, actually. Yeah, actually, I, fennel would be good. Yeah. Yeah, I've used all different, um, I've used different meats and different things all the time. So, yeah, we just let that cook up. Did you add yeah. some onion in there? I did, so I added a red onion as well. Yep, that should be on the directions too. I have one red onion, one red bell pepper, two, um, two to four. I'm a, I love garlic, so I, I think I just added four of those. <laughs> um, four cloves of garlic, or you can add two to four. Or if you don't like the garlic cloves, um, you can add some um, garlic powder as well. I would say about a tablespoon. Um, and yeah. Nice, that's awesome. So it, what do you usually serve with it? Like. So, I usually serve, I'm going to serve you all some bread with it. Um, most times, you go, so if you're going to eat it as a side, some people eat this just as a side, then they don't use the corn. Oh, okay. Excuse me. So if you eat it as a side, you don't use the corn, you just use it as a side dish. Um, I like to add the corn and make it a meal, mm -hmm. and then add some cornbread with it. Ooh, nice. Cornbread with this is amazing, but I'm sorry to make you guys cornbread today. <laughs> we'll definitely get you guys like some honey cornbread with it just to add a little bit of sweetness to it because it does have a tad bit of spice to it. Um, if you're using Old Bay seasoning, if you don't want it to have any spice at all, don't use that. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, so Old Bay has, or you can use any other Creole seasoning as well. Some people don't like the taste of Old Bay. They think it's a little bit too salty. So oh. there's a sauce, out, a spice out there called Slap Your Mama that I love, I love. It's so good, it makes you like want to slap your mama, so. <laughs> um, I, I believe that's why it's called that. But um, I definitely, that's what, another reason why we're working on that spice line. Mm -hmm. um, so my grandma, between her salt taste, she's 98, and my salt taste, it's like we're pretty, we're pretty like um, even, equal, oh, yeah. you know? So I think the spice line is gonna be really, really consistent. Um, of most of the spices that come from like, like the Creole spices and things like that are so, so salty. So we're kind of just trying to make an alternative. Yeah. You know, especially for soul food. Um, most people, like most black people use lari seasoning salt. Like that's, that's the seasoning you find in like every black person's cabinet. <laughs> so it's like, um, it's just way too salty. Um, so we're just trying to find um, you know, different alternatives and different healthy alternatives. Like I'm, I'm my first cooking class that I'm gonna be teaching on my own, um, I'm gonna be talking about using like 
grapeseed oil instead of vegetable oil as an alternative, oh, um, you yeah. know, to be heart healthy, you know, things like that. Because, you know, I have a husband, you know, black men have a very high, um, high cholesterol rate and um, heart disease. So I'm really trying to just, you know, go out there in my community and just teach a little bit more about just better options when you cook. You don't have to, I'm not saying throw away the fried food. I'm just saying once every two weeks. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying, you know, no vegetable oil or whatever, but just reduce it to grapeseed or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just different ways that, you know, we can better ourselves and our community. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, for sure. Special occasions. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely, like absolutely, it. absolutely. You know, you never, there's a lot of these things that I learned in Serve Safe and in culinary school that I had no idea, Yeah. you know, about, you know, so when I talked to other people in my community, they had no idea, mm. you know what I mean? Like just a small thing, like, if you have a pizza or something sitting out and you order takeout, you want it in the refrigerator between two and four hours. After that, it grows a bunch of bacteria on it. <laughs> most, of, most of us buy a pizza and won't put it in the, the, the refrigerator until, you know, we go to sleep or before yeah. we're getting ready to go to sleep or, you know. So it's yeah. like, you know, little things like that, you know, um, could really, you know, save your life, help your gut flora. Um, so, yeah. yeah, not to get too scientific. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, there are obviously... Okay, you have oh, yeah. Sorry, I have a question. So, you're, you're going to launch a spice line? Is that what you said? Yeah. Did you talk about, or can you talk about what spices you think you would Yeah, absolutely, with? absolutely. So we have something, we have a pepper sauce. That's the first thing. It um, makes the per perfect batch of collard greens every time. So it's the nice. pepper sauce that my grandma um, created. Um, with different peppers, onions, things like that. And then she puts the special sauce in it. Um, it's like amazing. So <laughs> we have the pepper sauce. We have that complete. We also have an all-purpose seasoning. We have a garlic ranch dry rub, and Ooh. then we also have a sweet vanilla cinnamon um, spice that I use for my cinnamon rolls. So I decided to just make that into a spice as well. That sounds great. So those are the four that we have right now. Awesome. And yeah. that will be next year, you said? Next year, yeah. We're, we're thinking January to get that rolling out. Um, but we're just, you know, finishing up with all the, you know, logistics behind it and the science, you know, yeah. with the seasonings and, and also local, local um, seasoning. The bulk seasonings that's it's been kind of hard to find oh yeah um so if you are if you do uh carry local seasonings please send me an email <laughs> so we can work together and um get these seasonings finished and pushed out nice yeah. so there are obviously things that like people like love and have like started to follow you for you mm -hmm. know like the beard i like the cinnamon rolls what do you like to make for your family um so i just started making well we really like Creole food, we really like Cajun yeah. food, so we make a lot of shrimp etouffee, mm -hmm. we make a lot of gumbo, uh, we make a lot of things like that at my house. For the last two days, I've been making these um, seafood gumbo pot pies, Ooh. where I literally just take some gumbo that I make, add, my daughter's allergic to shellfish, so hers has no, just chicken and straw sausage. My husband and I, I add some crab meat, some shrimp, pop it in the oven, pop the dough on the top. <sighs> Phenomenal. That Phenomenal. So good. Probably one of the best things I've made lately, but I really like to do all of my experimenting at home. Yeah. So my husband, and he's a trooper, um, he, <laughs> he tries everything. Luckily, he loves it. Um, but we, eat, we just eat a lot of things that, you know, we, um, I don't cook <laughs> yeah. normally on a normal basis yeah. So for my business. So. Yeah, um, I was saying earlier. I was I was recently talking with I'm Carmel. Just this real quick. Yeah, from, yeah, from Melly and Mel's, and she was saying just like if one more person orders mac and cheese or fried chicken, oh my Look, god. But, and but I, the thing, the, yeah. see, the thing about it is, that's what's so interesting um, um, about cooking soul food. A lot of people love soul food. Soul food is definitely a fabric of America sure. um, that yeah. hasn't been, that not a lot of people know how to cook because it's, a, it's something that's passed down from people who can't read and write. Right, so, yeah. you know, um, some of those recipes that we have, you know, they're verbal and, you know, a lot of us, you know, the newer cooks, you know, in today's age, they've definitely, you know, been able to, to remix it and whatnot. Like, there's a great um, documentary on Netflix right now called... Um, High on the Hog. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it has Michael Tweedy on there. I oh, love I Michael love Tweedy. Him. I met him when I was going to um, MATC. He's amazing. Um, but it he's just so really. funny in general. Yes, he's, yeah. he's amazing. Yeah. Like, he's like trying to be like him when I grow up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, the Afro culinaria and just learning about, you know, the influence that, you know, 
African American food has, you know, in our country. And it's like you don't know how much people love it and like miss those authentic recipes until you start pushing it out. Yeah. And it's like my mac and green, my mac and greens, my mac and cheese, my which has which has six pounds of cheese in it. Um, and I also have a smoked um, cheddar mac and cheese that has a oh cornbread crumble on it. If you're trying to get fancy. Yeah. Um, but that, my collard greens, um, any of my fried chicken, fried catfish, that's like, it, it's my best sellers for yeah. sure when it comes to my soul food. Um, so it's just, it's just nice to see that soul food is so comforted. I always say soul, soul food is gourmet because of the amount of time it takes. Mm. It may not look pretty, but it takes so much time to prepare a really nice soul food dinner. Like, when you're going to my grandma's house, she's up at six o'clock in the morning, you know, well, back in the day, picking greens and doing all of this. But like, now she's still up at 6 a.m., putting some type of meat on the stove, getting it tender, getting it ready. Like, those are the smells that you're used to smelling. And it takes time. Yeah. You know, like, when you, that's why soul food can't have a fast food restaurant. So you know, no soul food, fast food restaurants. And if you do, they cook the food two or three days before. <laughs> Okay, it's I mean, really it up a little bit. Right, right yeah. it's really, really hard to cook soul food on a consistent basis unless you have a power team. So, like, I, I would love for it to be considered gourmet one day just mm -hmm. because of the type of preparation, time, and love it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Another question from the audience. So, um, someone is wondering about the seasoning that you use for when you put collard greens, and it sounds like. So the seasoning you're talking about won't be ready until Yeah, it won't January. be ready till January. Yeah, yeah. We're so we're hoping January, February at the latest. But it is a pepper sauce. Okay. Um I can't tell you the secrets to that just yet. Um but we did do a um demo with Pasture and Plenty um last week. So if you want to check that out, you can also go to our page at paletpleasuresonline.com and you can check that out as well. Um if you want to look at that demo. Um, it won't give you all the secrets, but it will still give you a nice guide on how to make you some good greens. So. We're getting into this time of year where I'm getting Swiss chard, we're getting kale, yeah. oh, we're yeah. getting so like, oh, yeah. and I get these massive greens, and I'm like, okay, there's not room for me to store this properly. Right. I have to cook it now, because yeah. you know, otherwise it'll wilt. So I, I just, I feel like I have to like find ways of yeah, breaking that's, that down. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. So I actually just had a friend donate 15 pounds of collard greens to That's me. A lot. From, she just picked it from Troy yeah. Farms. She's like, I don't know what to do. Bring it to me. So what I do with my extra greens, I actually use kale, green. I use everything. Yes. And the same way I cook my collard greens, I will put kale in there. I'll put everything in there. Yeah. Um, but you can actually just chop up your greens, clean them off really good, put them in a freezer bag, and just put them in the freezer, and take them out when you're ready. Are you taking the stems off at that take point? Take the stems okay. off, yep, just like Grandma did. Take those stems off and just cut them up, slice them up, put them in a bag. I weigh them. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, uh, put them in the freezer, and then whenever you're ready to cook them, you can just drop them in the pot. Nice. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, no more wasting greens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, where are we at? So, as you can see, it's just smelling even better. I'm going to bring this over here. Believe it or not, my hands, my fingers have like almost like no feeling in them or something. You know, it's chef hands. Okay. Yeah, chef hands yeah. for sure. So I'm just mixing this pot up here. I'm gonna tilt it so you can see. So everything just looks really, really good in there. Oh yeah, I can see the camera shot. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more water. Again, you wanna just barely cover your cabbage. And it's going to cook down some more, so that's going to be enough water here. And we're almost at a point where we're going to add the corn, and we're going to be ready. Nice. So, are, do you make this in any kind of different way than your grandma does or did? Like, oh. Are there deviations that you do that you're like, mm, I'm going to do it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, my grandma does not add corn. Oh, okay. Um, she's probably looking at me like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> um, but that's just because I like to use this as a one-pot shop. Like, I don't want to eat carbs that day, but I really want, like, the meat sweats. I'll add a bunch of meat in with yeah. the cabbage and then add some corn to kind of top it off. Because I like it to be like a cabbage boil. Oh, you yeah. know, I really, yeah. really like that um, that taste. And I think the corn gives it a really phenomenal taste. You'll see when I cook the corn with it, I don't let the, the um, kernels fall off. I just cook it whole, and then we pull it out right before it's finished so it can be still nice and soft. Yeah. You know, when you all bite into it, so. Nice. Yeah, and it just gives, it's like, it seeps with like this amazing flavor, so. Yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. That sounds great. I, I, fe I feel like there are things that I, I'll have to deviate, like as I as I make some of these older recipes, mm -hmm. where I think, sure, this would be good, but I like either I can't find it, or like this is kind of the, the taste that I like more. Right, right. And one thing, my grandma eats a lot of pork. Oh, okay. I am not a huge pork fan unless it's bacon. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love me some bacon. Um, I really don't cook with, she uses um, salt pork. So oh, she'll yeah. tell you, you know, back in the day, that's what was available. So she was getting salt pork scraps and, you know, um, just different scraps, di uh, chicken scraps and, you know, different scraps. So those were the scraps she was using in her cabbage stew. Yeah. But for me, you know, now I have a choice. I'm using um, smoked turkey meat and then I really like to use some smoked sausage as well, which is pork. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to use my smoked sausage and then I like to use, um, or I, most of the time I use turkey sausage because a lot of people in my family don't eat pork. Mm. So we eat, um, usually use turkey sausage with this one. So. Nice. So you recently did, uh, you said you did a wedding a couple weekends ago? Yep, weekends? I did uh, September 3rd. I did uh, my largest wedding yet. <laughs> my third wedding this year, the largest one yet, 200 people in um, Wisconsin Dells. Nice. It was amazing. Right. I got to hire my first staff. <laughs> um, it was led by my dad, who was a banquet server um, at the Sheraton Hotel for 15 years. So he made sure the staff was just like perfect. And like now I'm just like, Dad, we just need to just go into business together. And just <laughs> trying to take him away from Meredith. And he's like, um, we'll talk. So, <laughs> but I'm supposed to be moving to Georgia next year. So I've told my dad, you know, if you want me to stay here, you need to go into business with me, sir. So hopefully I'll still be here after April. I mean, it yeah. sounds like he has an invested reason to convince he you. He really, really does. You know, and it's just like just to see, you know, your dad just so proud and just like working and like it was weird because I was like the Gordon Ramsay and he's my dad. So I was kind of <laughs> I was kind of scared to really give it to him like I would normally. But you know, it worked out. It was kind of fun, you know, to have those roles, you know, kind of reversed. Like my dad has to listen to everything I say. So it was just it was it was I amazing. I cannot even imagine that. Like working with your dad? No. I oh. love my dad. Oh, okay. I, love my dad. Um, I, I love my parents very much. Uh, I don't know if the, either of them would want to take a like, direction from me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard. Like, I work with my family. It's really, really hard. Especially yeah. right now in COVID, um, it's hard to find people to help you. Oh, yeah. So, like, my family has been amazing. Like, my little sister, Giovanna, my friend, Gina, who's also one of my assistants, uh, my husband. Um, that's pretty much who helps me. Um, is my family and then when it comes to servers and like things like that I just reach out to the people in my community and they're always they're always down to help and most of them have serving experience I always I am a little patience Ramsey in the kitchen so yeah. you know yeah. I, I prefer people that you know know what they're doing because it's just so hard you know when you're running the business and you're thinking you have to think about the back of house and the front of house and make sure everything was perfect so you know without yeah. my family I would not be able, been able to execute this. Like, it, it just all comes full circle from child care with my daughter. My mother-in-law owns a daycare <laughs> center. Like, oh everything goodness. just comes into full circle, and it's just confirmation that like this is what I'm supposed to be doing because it's just working out so well. Yeah. So. I feel like when I first started doing this Go kind of reporting. Ask, 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 oh yeah, please do. Real yeah. Quick. Um, I was always asking people, "Do you want to open a restaurant?" Yeah. So. It seems like you're doing a ton of things, but I have not heard you mention a restaurant. Is that something that you want to do? That's a great question. So, no. <laughs> I, um, before COVID, I was like, ah, I can't wait to get my restaurant. It's going to be the first Michelin star here in Madison. You know, no, um, absolutely not. Just speak with the uncertainties that COVID has created. And um, I'm somebody that learns from other people's mistakes. So I listen a lot to mentors and my other, my other friends who have restaurants here in Madison. And just seeing them struggle and go through that time of uncertainty. And some, some of them had to mm. close. And those were the people that really told me, you're doing you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. This is the best thing you could be doing right now, and you need to stick to it. So I'm gonna to listen to my friends who have restaurants, and I'm gonna to continue to do this pop-up, this catering thing. Now, I would love to have like my own um, farmhouse, Oh yeah. For you, with a commercial kitchen where you can rent it out for weddings, where you can rent it out yeah. and do all these beautiful things. That's my absolute dream. And we have a lot of land in Wisconsin, so I definitely see that in, in the future. <laughs> um, but that's what I want to do. And then um, I also want to open up a culinary school. Oh, cool. As well. I yeah. also, that's my like far off dream. But like, you know, I definitely I love teaching about food. So. Yeah. And I like learning about food. So 
Yeah, this, mm. this feels very like natural for you. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. I was just saying earlier today, like Gordon Ramsay better watch out. I'm really <laughs> like I'm, I'm really feeling this zone. Like I'm really feeling this zone. So I'm excited. Yeah, awesome. So now I'm just going to add some seasoning. I have the corn in there. I have everything in there. We're going to just add a little bit of Old Bay, some pepper, and some sea salt. You can add any kind of salt you want. Um, but these are the ones that I prefer. So I'm just going to add it. Now remember you add, if you, if you do it the way that grandma does it, remember that you did have some salt already on your cabbage, so don't add too much. Add a little pepper. When you refrigerate this later, does it get kind of gelatinous -y? It does. Yeah. It does. You know and the word. Oh, yeah, gelatinous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's from the cartilage and the bones of the um, turkey meat breaking down. And that's where that gelatinous flavor and that like kind of fat that floats at the top comes from. I don't know why that's like one of the, the deepest things I took from culinary school. Cartilage creates gelatin. Cartilage <laughs> creates gelatin. Isn't that so cool? Stop. Stop the bones. All right. Broth for me. So I'm just going to mix this up, and then I'm going to show you what the pot looks like. I feel like I'd also be inclined to put carrots in there. I have a lot of carrots in my. Say that again. Carrots, I feel like, would be delicious as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I've never tried carrots in this. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Just kind of make it like a garden pot, though. Mm -hmm. I would, but but always freestyle. And as you can kind of see that broth in there, as you can see, it's not too high. I don't want my corn to get soggy. I'm very picky with corn, so um, just to keep it from being too soggy, I'm just going to flip it a little bit. Let me know if you need me to tilt that. Quick question from the audience. Yes. Would Chef Patience? Take the gelatinous layer off before reheating it or leave it? Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Keep all that. That's flavor. That is flavor. <laughs> you keep all that. Unless you don't want it. It's going to melt once you heat it back up anyway. But that is some amazing flavor. All and right. We're hearing reports from um, viewers that my kitchen smells heavenly. Amen. Oh. As it yes. should. It smells heavenly in here as well. So I mix that up, and you can just kind of see, starting to get a little bit translucent here. Mm. Smelling amazing. So I can kind of, I can kind of tell what it tastes like by the way it smells, which is weird. I think it's just something that I, with, comes with practice. I think I'm going to have to add a little bit more salt, but I'm going to taste it real quick. <laughs> All right, one second. And I think that's another reason why chefs don't eat. We eat through our nose <laughs> when we're <laughs> cooking. You know what I mean? It's so hard. It's so good. Uh, okay. Yes. So one thing, too, I want to show you about tasting. My, hus my husband's watching at home. He's probably like, that is not how you taste. Because at my house, we don't taste off of a metal spoon. We taste off of our hand because it gives you the maximum flavor. If you taste it off of the metal spoon, you kind of get some of that metal flavor. So, um, so it kind of takes away from what you're doing. So just put it on the back of your hand. You see this a lot in black culture. Perfect. Huh. Yeah. So that's the best way you want to try it? I guess. OK. How hot, is it? How hot is it? It's not hot at all. Well, maybe not hot for me. Hopefully it's not. It shouldn't be hot for you. I don't want to burn you. Just taste it. See oh what God, I mean? It's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you really get the sausage, this garlic and the sausage, and you really get it. Yeah. Also, you. there's garlic in there. Told you. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's like <laughs> people will say, like, when you're tossing a salad, you're supposed to use your hands, because, like, that's the best way to, like, figure out. And I'm just like, but then my hands will be dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I used wooden. Oh, yeah. Wooden forks with salads. But, like, when you want to taste, for the most part, I definitely use my the back of my hand. It's just it's just better. It reminds me of like the wash your hands like a baby bottle, bottle or something salty. like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because then you're like, oh my god, it's too much salt. But it's, it's used. It's actually your hand. <laughs> I'm gonna just wash my hands real quick. <laughs> All right. 
right? Oh, it smells so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. No, you're fine. <laughs> so I'm going to just turn the pot up a little bit just for the sake of cooking. I will wash my hands as well. That was a good idea. So we, I usually cook this on a medium, medium low heat. Um, if you are using the Instapot, um, I cook it for about 30 minutes to an hour on high. If you're going to be going longer, put it on low and it'll give you about two hours. If you don't want your cabbage to be too mushy. All right, behind you. It looks so good. Maybe if I had a, I should have grabbed a top for this. Yeah. I so, was thinking I would use, I have an all clad like stock pot that's like this tall. Oh yeah. And I've used it for mixed stock a bunch of times. Mm hmm With bugs. Oh, yeah. And you have the one that has the spigot on the bottom? Yeah, so it's got, well, no, it doesn't have a spigot on the bottom. It has a strainer thing. It okay. It has two strainer things. Like, like, there's the big pot, and then there's, like, the one level of strainer, and then there's a second level of strainer even on the top. So okay. So you can, like, put your stock ingredients, and you can also steam something. Right. It's the most amazing contraption. <laughs> it is not light at all. So oh yeah. It's kind of a pain to get out. Oh yeah. But once it's out. Yeah, I love stock pots. Like the one at MATC spoiled me because the one we had, it had a spigot on the bottom. So you Ooh. put all your bones in there, you put all your stuff in there, and so you can just nice. strain it out the pot. That's oh, that spoiled the dream. Me. My my thirtieth oh. birthday's coming up. Thank you. Know you brought us a little Oh, you're so awesome. How did you know I needed that? He reading <laughs> minds over here. I literally said that. Oh, he hear me in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I love it. Thank you so much. And it's the right one. So I'm just gonna put the top on and let it cook a little bit faster. I usually, I'm giving it some time. I'll sit down, have me a glass of wine, watch a little bit of some soap operas or something. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even think soap operas are on anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just like to, you know, the best thing about cooking soul food is the time that you kind of get to like congregate with your family while you're cooking and it's just like the smells, the house, like I'll have to invite you all over for dinner <laughs> before I move so you can kind of see you like you really have to be there to really really appreciate a full soul food spread like because it's just so special like yeah. and that's and that's why like Thanksgiving, any holiday, birthdays, soul food, soul food, soul food, soul food. So we're having a Halloween party at the Pancake Cafe, nice. um, October 30th. So um, we will have soul food there as well. Kids are gonna just come from five to seven to get some candy bags, and then the adults will be able to just congregate, kind of have like a little costume party. You do have to have proof of vaccination um, for that party, please. Um, so but I think it's going to be great. I'm a little concerned that you're already close to being Madison. Tell us, yeah. uh, tell us how we can keep you here. So, yes, great question. So, <laughs> I only thing I need to stay in Madison is a permanent kitchen that I can call my own. So if anyone out there has a permanent kitchen that I can call my home, um, I would love that. Feed Kitchen is my home kitchen right now, um, but I would love to have a space um, that people can rent out. Um, obviously, that's probably going to take a little bit more time, um, but that's the goal that I'm working towards, just to have my own space where people can rent it out. Um, it's a catering facility, um, and that's kind of what I'm working for. I know they are building the Black Excellence Center soon, so if I can get a spot in there, I'm here. Uh -huh. So um, yeah. that's kind of just where that's kind of where I am right now. Um, I, I really um, Madison needs. A different food scene. Yeah, um, we've been having the same food over and over and over. My favorite late night spot, Wings Over Madison, is closed right now, um, and they were like the one of the few places that were open till one o'clock in the morning. Oh my so gosh, nobody's open late. No ever. one's open late. Not right even on Saturday. Exactly, Sorry. and that's what like, I would do. Like, so <laughs> really before COVID got like really really bad, I had one chance to do a pop up during like a time where they had like a really big event going on downtown, and I had a lot of after hour business. Yes. So yeah. it's like I also do a lot of consultations with people who are like cooking like out of their home or selling plates like you know on on the grind and I try to help them you know legalize themselves so that they can get their food out there because we have some of the best barbecue businesses in Madison um, I just collaborated with a few different um, 
businesses like Divine Wilson. He is called the Divine Grill. He now yeah. has his location on the north side out of the Sitco gas station. They have a nice. uh, restaurant there. So now he has a place for him. Um, I also collaborated with Clyde's Pies. Yes. Clyde'spies.net, the amazing pizza. Um, <laughs> He's um, a black-owned pizza guy. He makes his own pizzas from scratch. It is just phenomenal, and me and him have partnered as well. So that's another way that I'm kind of just trying to, you know, work together and kind of build a community of people that are like me that kind of need a space. Yeah. And it feels unattainable because commercial kitchens are hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. Yeah. So I know our kitchen at MATC was about $5 million. So for me, just to have the space that I want and the calculations that I've been doing, I'm already 120000 in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you no, know, but I, I believe in myself. I believe in my business. Um, and I believe in, like, you know, my customer base. People are always, you know, telling me about something. You mm -hmm. know, people are always recommending me for something or reaching out to me. So, you know, I definitely think it's going to come. You know, and my chef ancestors, are definitely like looking out for me, you know, and guiding me. So I'm really not worried about yeah. worried about it. it's going to happen. So it feels like there are these business incubators, but then there's also this gap between like like incubating and like getting started and like the next step of growth. Right. Too. Right. Um, and there's like this sort of pain point right mm -hmm. there. Um, but yeah, like there's going to be a food innovation center at the Madison Public Market. That's mm -hmm still hasn't been built like right, another year, right? Right, exactly. Yes. But, but imagine how yeah. many caterers and, and, and chefs are going to be like fighting over these small yes. spaces oh, because sure. like Seed Kitchen was just so crazy this summer oh, yeah. with all the food trucks and you know. And but they didn't have enough cooler space even before. Right, you know, and with and, and even with Christine's Kitchen being open as well, yes. like she has a lot of caterers there and they're selling great food out of Christine's as well. But it's like with those being really the two only like you know commercial incubate incubators that we have in Madison mm -hmm. you know it, it it limits us on what we can do and like I'm telling you guys I meet I meet so many people at Feed Kitchen that can cook the best food I've ever tasted and I'm like crying because they only can afford to cook once every two days and you know yeah. like if, if I if I could like I would have a commercial kitchen with like a hundred <laughs> kitchens in it you know <laughs> but um, we have great food here in Madison um, and it's like that's one of the reasons why I was moving because I've seen some of my friends that own um, catering companies, they moved and they instantly, instantly yeah. got what they needed. So it's just a little bit harder in Madison and it's just like, it gets you down yeah. sometimes, you know, especially when I like know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, yeah. you know. So um, yeah, if I can get that kitchen, you know, um, that'd be a blessing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm working for it. I'm going to get it. I like this. I'm, it sounds I'm like manifesting to, to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Manifesting. I, I manifest everything. So I took this class um, with Urban Triage called yeah, Supporting yeah. Healthy Black Families. And we have this saying that says, um, when I say chair, chair falls. Meaning, like, I can manifest anything as long as I, you know, put my mind to it. And my business started booming as soon as I started saying that. To the point where I'm like, oh, my <laughs> gosh. Let me get out of the way for another chair falls. Because, like, I get so many amazing opportunities. Um, and it's, it's, you just have to believe. And yeah. I'm very spiritual as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, when I say chair, chair falls. And I, I completely believe that. So. Nice. Yeah. Right. Be, be careful, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Someone uh, from the audience also wanted to know if you had any low-sodium recipes. Oh, okay. Low-sodium recipes. I would say don't add salt. <laughs> 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 um, Really, most salts, most seasonings, like um, the Creole seasonings, just just buy them with no salt, um, really, or just add a little bit. There's no specific um, low sodium things that I do besides just adding a little to no salt. Or like with my grandmother, I, I was her caretaker for a while, so what I would do is I would cook her meals and let her add the salt and pepper at the end. Because some, some food has salt already, believe it or not. Yeah. So you really don't need that much. You'll, you'll be surprised how little salt you actually need. So sometimes you can just add it at the end because um, most of the food has, if it has some fat on it or if it has something like that, it usually is going to have some type of salt. Yeah, I, I, for a while I was doing some meals for folks in the church, you know, and mm -hmm. you can like deliver them. And sometimes it was like a low sodium situation. I'd be like, okay, that's not how I cook. Uh, how can I figure this out? And I mm -hmm. found like a little vinegar sometimes was, would help or mm -hmm. like a lemon juice or something like that just to give it something. Yeah, yeah. Um, or like, yeah, seasoning blends without, without salt. Yeah, I usually just use seasoning blends without salt. It's a good idea. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, the all-purpose seasoning that we have is actually low salt as well nice. because my grandma, she's not big on salt, obviously, with her being 98. And then just with me <laughs> yeah. getting older and my husband getting older, I just want to, you know, lower our salt intake, which we all should be doing. Um, but yeah, that's a great question. Just add a little bit. I don't cook with a lot of salt anyway, as you can see. It's just literally just a dash or two here. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really at your discretion, for sure, for sure. And, and it's going to be so much flavor in these sausages and the smoked turkey meat. You really don't have to add salt if you are someone who um, doesn't like a lot of salt content. So, oh. so this is actually almost ready. Yay. How long do we have, Christy? I feel like I've been talking for like two hours. Seven to three. So it has been about an hour. Okay, perfect. Well, it looks like we are, let me just double check this corn here. Yeah, just let me know when I need to start grabbing bowls here from folks. Yeah. You can actually start now then. All right, let's do it. Grab me some, give me your bowl. So I'm going to rinse this out, and then I'm going to pour it in here so you can see it a little Thank bit you. better. And I'm just going to line these right up. How's it smelling in here? Can you can you get some, get some good fumes? Beautiful. Mm, smells so good. Oh yeah, I'm excited for you to try it. All right. these three over here okay okay so I take my corn out right away just because I don't want it to overcook again I don't like that really soggy super soft corn I like that corn fest corn you know we're in Wisconsin oh, yeah. I like this have a beautiful crunch to it so Yeah, you can smell that. <laughs> you can smell it's like, it's like overwhelming with so the nice. fumes. And like this is this is a weird thing to say, but like just to like be here with people and being able to like fully breathe feels really good. Yes, yes, absolutely. We take those things for granted, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I went to the theater to you know see a show, and everybody's you know socially distanced out and everything, and I'm just sort of like I just want to like breathe for a second. Right. It didn't. I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Especially at the movies, because you never know who's, you know, yes. who's protected, who's not. Well, and like some of the other, these theater critics who are writing, like, you're going to ruin it for everyone. Never take your mask off, which is like valid, but also yelling. Yeah, it's just I got so excited to take it off. Then when I had to take it off, put it on, it's just like, oh, gotta sh My brain is in space. I'm very I negative. was like excited to wear a lip gloss again. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I was so excited for lip gloss. But now it's like, <laughs> put lip gloss on, I take my mask off, I have it all over my chin. <laughs> yeah. Just like, whatever. All right, so we're just going to plate it here. Now, if you have some skin in your meal, that's fine. I promise you. Eat it. It's very good. Top it with some corn and just some spread there. All right, I'm gonna serve them up here. Mm -hmm. Katie, you got to go first. Congratulations. Steaming. Oh, it is very, it is steaming hot, so just be a little bit careful. It's there. not as brothy as I thought it would be. Right. Like, so I actually just poured some broth in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just poured the broth in here um, from the pot. Nice. So that's why it's not as brothy, but. Normally it is. <coughs> so can you see that there? That's, that's that finishing touch. You should have that. So if you're using Old Bay, that's kind of where that red um, flavor is coming from. Red, seed, red color is coming from, as well as the meats and all of that good stuff. Now, if you don't use Old Bay and you don't like the saltiness of it, you can also use paprika. I did forget to say that. I love paprika, especially the um, Hungarian. Paprika oh, yeah. is my favorite. So flavorful. I like smoked paprika in a lot of mm -hmm. things too. Oh yeah, smoked everything is kind of like mm -hmm. the thing right now. I'm telling you. Alright. 
details in here. And like, like this meal is like something that I really, really appreciate just because of the story behind it and why my grandma makes it. Um, and as you can see, you can kind of see why I add the corn when I want it to be a complete meal instead of just eating it as a side because it's cool. I feel like the corn just makes it a complete meal automatically. Yeah. Um, are you ladies? That's oh, actually a really you? pretty one, yeah. This one? Yeah, it's very, like, attractive, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. It just smells so good. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I have to, like, fight my husband to stay at his hands out of the pot. Like, the smoked <laughs> turkey meat, sometimes it'll be gone before the meal is gone because my husband just won't keep his hands out of the turkey meat. <laughs> It's like a little child that I love very much. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's watching. <laughs> you know, and I have to shout out my husband for being my first taste tester. Mm. You know, for the longest, like, all, I have five brothers and sisters. No one would eat anything that I cooked. <laughs> not, not even my mom, you know what I mean? So I had to, I had to literally... Cause I used to really be a bad cook. I'll be honest. Like when I, I first better. when I first started, um, I would watch grandma, but I I wouldn't like tell her that's what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I would just watch and I would just go home and try it. And like the first couple times, my mom would be like, "What are you doing? <laughs> Who taught you that? <laughs> that's not how grandma does it." So then I just like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna ask her. I'm gonna just ask her now. So grandma really, she was like, "Oh no, you're you're gonna, you're my granddaughter. You need to." <laughs> You need to know how to cook, sweetie. My grandma yeah. would leave like whole peppercorns in a stew like this, and mm -hmm. like, if you found one by accident. Oh, and you ate it. Oh, it would just, I would crack between my back teeth. Like, oh, oh yeah. No. Oh yeah. You don't know how spicy black peppercorn is until you do that. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so 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 spicy. That's actually a good thing to add to these stews as well too. But I, I like ground black pepper. Mm. Um, I, I just love the flavor of pepper. That's why I use a lot of paprika, obey. I just love pepper. But I don't like super, super spicy things, <laughs> believe it or not. All right. Oh, all right. Here you are. And then let's get you a plate, Lindsay. Oh, yeah, gosh. Yeah, it's, it's one more bowl. Can you pass me that bowl right there? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna try yeah. I know it's yeah, like sitting yeah. in front of you. Yes, feel free, feel free. <laughs> Do you gentlemen want some? Yeah, I'll plate some up. Yeah, this, this is amazing. This looks so good. Thank you. Oops. So, so this is actually, so if you're gonna eat this with a side, as a side, one thing I cook a lot when I cook cabbage as a side is oxtails. Oxtails, goats, uh, curried goat, curried lamb, curried anything. Um, cabbage goes amazing with it. This, this style of cabbage stew, just omit the um, carrots. Just omit the carrots. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Absolutely. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for doing this. Yes, absolutely. It's been amazing. Yes, it has been. I hope I didn't talk too much. No, perfect. But so I'm so excited. Okay. How's it tasting, everyone? <laughs> all right, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm make sure you all check out my website, palatepleasuresonline.com. Please subscribe with your email. Um, if you have any catering needs, how small feel free to. Do you do catering Say that again. How small of a group do you do catering for? Oh, I can cater for two people. I actually, <laughs> so I um, I had a group, uh, a group. I had a lady rent out the entire restaurant mm. for her husband nice. for their anniversary. So That's I did so a private nice. dinner there. I also come to your home and do private dinners as well. I'm working on some more meal prep options as well. So I mean literally I'm everything. It's awesome. Literally everything that has to do with cooking. I, I you know, I wanna be versatile. I don't want it to get boring. Yeah. You know, I wanna always love this. So as much as I love it now. Awesome. So. Well thank you again. Yeah. And thank you everybody for coming. Thank you. So, yeah.